What's up guys, today I wanna to talk about net torque and what that's gonna mean when I have more than one force that's trying to get an object that's free to move to spin. So I have a pulley right here and it's gonna have a center of mass that's located right here. And pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have two forces that are acting on this object. The first I'm gonna call F1 and F1 is gonna act right here and that's gonna be equal to 100 Newtons. And another force that's acting right here on the disc and trying to get it to spin this way, that's gonna have a force two equal to 80 Newtons. Now there's some more information given. I'm gonna give the radius of this disc, R here is gonna be equal to 12 centimeters. But remember, in torque, R isn't the radius, it's the length from the center of mass that causes the object to spin. So this is actually R1. Now R2 is gonna be a little bit different. R2 is equal to eight centimeters. So we can see that this force acting isn't on the outside of the circle. It's a little bit closer to the center of mass and has a different R. So essentially, we're gonna have the torque of force two and we're also going to have the torque of force one. Now, the first thing we need to keep in mind is we're going to be doing some math. So we have to look, do, do these forces make the object spin clockwise or counterclockwise? Now, this force acting right here is going to try and get the object to spin this way. And that is clockwise. So we're going to say this is a clockwise force. And in physics, on torque, clockwise is a negative action. This force right here wants it to go counterclockwise. And in torque, counterclockwise back in time is a positive torque. So now what we have to do to find the two net torques is we have to say, what is the sum of the torques acting? This is gonna be the net torque. Let's look at the sum of the forces here. So we really are gonna be looking at the sum of the torques is really equal to torque force two plus torque force one. Now torque force two is going to be equal to F times R. Now I don't need sine because it's perpendicular, but what I do need is a negative sign out in front of this torque because it's moving clockwise. And this is gonna be plus F two R two. I now can sub in some numbers and say that the force is gonna be eight Newtons. We need to use meters, so this is gonna be 0.08 meters and that's all has to be a negative value plus 100 newtons times 0.12 meters if we simplify this further we see that this one causes a torque of minus 6.4 newton meters plus 12 newton meters so that means we have a net torque of plus 5.6 Newton meters. And what this plus sign means is it is going to be moving counterclockwise. But now sometimes, guys, the forces aren't going to be so obvious. I want to look at something that you know, and it's pretty much common sense. Let's say this is a meter stick, and I put this fulcrum right here. So this is the fulcrum. So this is where this object could spin left or right. Now, if I have this in the right spot, and you can kind of see, this would remain balanced. It would not spin, right? There's no spin. But now, if I were to move the fulcrum to say over here, common sense would tell you that this side would fall down, and it would start to spin in a counterclockwise position. You guys know that. That's having common sense. But now we have to think about the physics. Why does this one fall this way? And why does this one stay where it is? And I would ask you, what are the forces that could cause torque? So let's identify the forces that could be present. And if I asked you to label the forces present on this object that's keeping it balanced, a lot of you would say, well, there's some force of gravity here which is equal to some force of gravity over here, right? Because that's how we think of a balance. There's one on either side that's equal. 
But guys, this is not the case. And here's why. This FG is really weight. And all I have is a meter stick here. Can, uh, can an object have multiple weights? No, it only has one weight. So what we realize, the reason that there's no torque present is because when I have a plank or something like that, all of this thing's mass acts right at the center. We call this the center of mass. So say this was like a meter stick that had a mass of 100 grams. I would say this meter stick has a weight equal to mg, 100 grams, which is really 0.1 kilograms times 10. Now, if we look, what is the lever arm of this force on this object from its spinning point? Well, R equals zero meters. Therefore, torque equals zero Newton meters. And therefore, this object would not spin. So when I look at this thing, I'd say, well, where would I put the force that's making this object fall down? And the, and the place that we put it is right at the center of mass. So guys, gravity and weight can cause a torque. And what is R? R is still the distance from where that object wants to spin. So now if I want this thing to balance, I have to offset this torque force here by adding another force over here that has an equal torque to this force. So let's take a look at an example of a plank, almost like a seesaw, where the fulcrum is set up away from the center of mass. Okay, so in this example, I have a plank, and that plank has a length equal to 10 meters and a weight equal to 100 newtons. And the fulcrum is placed one meter from the end of the plank. And they want to know how far can a person with a weight of 800 newtons go towards the end of the plank before this thing will tip over. All right, so now the non-obvious other force that's acting is the center of mass. This also applies a torque. So the sum of the torques is going to be equal to the torque force of the plank which is making it go counterclockwise, so it's positive, plus the torque of the person. But remember, this torque of the person is going clockwise, so it's gonna be negative. So we can rearrange this. The torque of the plank has to be equal to the torque of the person. So I say FR is equal to FR. The force is gonna be the weight of the plank, which was given 100 Newtons. We know this is a 10 meter plank, so we know that the center of mass is at five meters. This is the five meter mark, but the spinning point is one meter in from that. So the spinning point or the lever arm is equal to four meters. And that has to be equal to this 800 Newton person times some X. We see X is gonna be equal to 0.5 meters. Now guys, super important, and, and this example is kind of crappy because we don't know if this is one half from the end or one half from here. Remember, this is R. So we just found out 0.5 to here. Now this question asks where from the end? Well, the end was one meter away, so it's kind of like the same answer regardless. But just remember, when you're solving for R, you are not solving from the end of the plank inward. You're solving from the focal point outward. And I'll show you one more example to give you an idea of what I mean there. Now in this problem, I have a meter stick. Okay, a meter stick is one meter long. And in this case, I'm going to put the fulcrum right at the center of mass. So this is going to be equal to x equals 0.5 meters. Now this is beautiful because that means that the center of mass of this plank, the force that acts here is going to be Fg through the middle, but that's going to be no torque because it acts through the center of mass that wants it to spin. So I'm now going to say that there's a three kilogram object at the 0.15 meter mark. And I want to know where should I put a five kilogram block to achieve equilibrium? Okay, so just to get a basis, I'm going to call this on the meter stick x equals zero meters. And I'm going to call this over here x equals one meter. 
So now I can say that right here at 0.15, I'm gonna have a three kilogram object. And I wanna know, I have to put a five kilogram weight over here somewhere, and here's where we have to be very, very careful, because we know that we're gonna have the torque of the three kilogram object has to be equal to the torque of the five kilogram object. So that's gonna be FR equals FR. But we have to be very, very careful of what R means here. If I am at the 0.15 meter mark, so many students are gonna confusingly put that as R. That is not the case. I have to go from 0.15 all the way to the center of mass where the spinning focal point is. So R is actually equal to 0.35 meters. So when I'm solving for the weight right here, which is really mg, I'm gonna say three kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, that's gonna give me the weight, times 0.35 meters. That is the torque of this three kilogram mass. And what I wanna solve for over here is the five kilogram times 10 meters per second squared times R or the location from the lever arm that that five kilogram mass should be. So when I solve for this, I get R equals 0.21 meters. So we have to be very, very careful. We do not place it at the 0.21 meter mark. That is not where we want it. We have to start here and go this way, 0.21 meters. So where must I place it? I need to start at the center point, 0.5 meters, and add 0.21 meters to that. And the five kilogram block is then going to be placed at 0.71 meters. So that is gonna be your answer. What R is and what it means in relation to the center of mass is something that I see confused all the time. Please don't make those same mistakes. All right, guys, so I hope that helped with net torque when a couple different torques are acting and also looking at the center of mass where gravity is gonna be the thing that actually applies the force that gives the torque to the object. If you have any questions about torque or net torque, equilibrium, let me know. Leave them down in the comments below. Look forward to more torque videos. There's still so much more that we need to talk about when it comes to torque, but I think right now you have a pretty good understanding of what's going on. Give this video a thumbs up if it really helped. And also share this channel with your friends taking physics. Let's try and grow it and see how big we can get this thing. And let's see how easy we can make physics for everybody. Have a good one, guys.